In the past, if you wanted to get scammed while buying a graphics card, you'd go onto Wish.com, you'd give them your credit card details, and then they'd send you this weird PTSD-riddled brainwashed graphics card, what am I? And everybody had a great time. The thing is, these graphics card scams are starting to remind me a little bit of Wildebeest. First, they migrated from eBay onto Wish.com, and now they're migrating from Wish.com onto a more legitimate seeming marketplace, Amazon. This video was initially supposed to be a little bit of a fake Amazon graphics card roundup video, but only one of the three fake graphics cards I ordered showed up after more than a month of waiting. Now I did query with Amazon about the two that didn't show up, but we'll talk about that later in the video. Before we get to that, let's have a look at the little, the little dazed and confused victim that showed up at the door. Another day, another scam graphics card unboxing. I actually really like doing these unboxings because they're like a lucky packet of deceit. You never really know what you're gonna get. Quite funnily, on the back here, they actually refer to it as a computer card reader. So yeah, let's, <laughs> let, let's see what this, what this graphics card looks like. See, I actually came prepared today give birth to that box. There we go. That is a very, very plain cardboard box that opens this way around. So let's do... Oh, there we go. So we've got another bubble wrapped card with a blank CD. I'm guessing this is the drivers that you need to get this running. And then here is the graphics card itself. So let's open it up and see, see what card we think this is. Now this is supposed to be a GTX 1050 Ti, according to the actual listing. Uh, so there we go, what a beauty! I find the shroud design on this graphics card pretty hilarious. It reminds me a little bit of like a bad 70s sci-fi movie interpretation of Aztec design. It makes me feel a little bit like if I plug this graphics card into a system, it's gonna unleash some terrible curse onto my house, which is gonna turn my firstborn son into like a sentient head of lettuce. Now here is a real GTX 1050 Ti. And as you can see on the surface, they look very similar, especially if you're not a neckbeard like I am. If you look on the back as well, they do kind of look pretty similar. There are a couple of changes though, but you do need to know what you're looking for. The first one is the memory modules aren't actually on the back of the PCB like they are on the fake graphics card. Another thing is the real 1050 Ti doesn't actually have an SLI finger because the 1050 Ti doesn't support SLI. So that is a pretty big giveaway that this isn't a 1050 Ti. But one of the most important differences, and one of the ones that's the easiest to look out for, in my opinion, is the rear I.O. difference on the two graphics cards. So as you can see, the 1050 Ti, being a reasonably modern graphics card, has a display port, an HDMI port, and a DVI port. It doesn't have this loser Triassic VGA port on it. So I think what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna plug this into a system, and we're gonna see what it thinks it is. So now we need to see if it's going to unleash the curse of Montezuma II or if it's actually going to launch. So let's use this bad boy and jump start it. I mean, that's a pretty good sign. Nothing's caught on fire yet, which is, which is the main concern. Okay, there we go. So it says it's a 1050 Ti, so it probably is one. Okay, there we go. So we're in Windows. It does the exact same thing that the Wish 1050 Ti did, where it doesn't output the entire signal. The resolution is actually stuck at 800 by 600. So now let's see if we can install an official NVIDIA driver and if it actually recognizes the card. After I install the drivers, I'm gonna try and play some games on it, see how they respond, and then I'm actually gonna take the card apart and see what GPU we're working with. Okay, so it seems as though installing the drivers uh, made the system crash. Okay, well, the little liar has crashed again. Let's try and play a game on it anyway and just see how it responds without the drivers there. Okay, let's see what it does with Half-Life 2. Okay, there we go. It seems to be rendering Half-Life 2 okay. Again, it's not letting me go above 800 by 600. 
Okay, well, an 800 by 600, as you can see, it looks pretty terrible, but it is running. I mean, I guess if all you want to do is play super low resolution Half-Life 2, you, you can do that. Ow, don't shoot me. One of the things that's always bothered me about Half-Life 2 is who the hell just leaves a bunch of exploding barrels lying next to a railway line? That just seems highly irresponsible. See what is under there. Okay, so let's take it apart and see what GPU we're working with underneath this shroud. Okay, there we go. Ooh, that's a very used looking GPU. It's so rusty. Okay, so now we're gonna clean it off and we're gonna see what's going on there. Again, my money is on the GTS 450. The plot thickens because they don't actually say what the GPU number is. Did they sand it down? Well, let me give it a bit of a better clean and just have a look under there. Okay, that's pretty weird. I've never seen that before, that the actual GPU die number isn't on the GPU. Because usually with NVIDIA GPUs, they have it on there. Let me, let me show you what I mean by taking apart the wish card, because that still had the model number on it. Okay, so as you can see here on the wish card, it does actually say uh, GF116 uh, with a couple of extra numbers there. If you Google that, it tells you that this is a GTS 450 revision 2. Now, if you put the two next to each other, you can actually see that they're the same GPU. I mean, this new Amazon fake card is almost definitely a GTS 450 as well. The GPUs look identical. So I've cleaned this die multiple times and as you can see there, it's pretty clear that they sanded the GPU number down. That is so dodgy! They're putting so much effort into these scams, what the hell? Looking at these two naughty graphics cards lying next to each other, it feels a little bit like I'm watching a Digivolution happen, but like, for scammers. They're both clearly from the same origin, but the one is just a more evolved version of the other one. So let's throw this one back in a PC and just confirm with uh, GPU-Z what graphics card this really is. Let's see what GPU-Z says of all of this. Because GPU-Z is really good at sniffing out a rat. Ah, oh, there we go. See, that's all you need to do. You launch GPU-Z and then it tells you that it's a fake uh, GTX 1050 Ti. It gives you a warning here. As you can see here, it has a GF106 GPU in it, which is a GTS 450 like I thought it was. Although, bear in mind that the Wish graphics card is actually a GF116, which is a GTS 450 Revision 2. It's a little bit newer, but they are functionally the same GPU. So now that we've unraveled the mystery of the new and improved fake GTS 450 scam card, let's talk a bit about the two graphics cards that didn't actually show up. Now before I get into this, I just want to again reiterate, I'm talking specifically about Amazon Canada here. Amazon.com seems to have pretty good control of the whole scam situation. There were a couple of cards that looked like they were scams, but they were hidden under search results and they were quite difficult to find. Whereas on Amazon Canada, if you search GTX 1050 Ti, in a lot of cases, the first result that shows up is a scam graphics card. Now, this is the card that I did a video on, and this one is obviously a scam because there are a bunch of reviews telling you that this is a scam graphics card. But that isn't always the case, and I think that gives us a little bit of an insight into how these scams actually operate and turn a profit on Amazon. So what they do is they list the, the fake graphics card and then have a bunch of people buy them because it takes about a month for the cards to actually arrive. So when they do or don't arrive after a month, people start complaining in the review section of the product and then people stop buying it. But there's like a month period where that listing from that seller is profitable and then I think they just kind of start over again. Now luckily, Amazon does have buyer protection in place and it's not really their fault. If you have an open marketplace on the internet, people are gonna use it to scam other people. It's just natural at this point, like, I don't know, the migration of wildebeest. Although, bear in mind, 
actually querying the product not showing up when it's from a third party seller is a huge pain in the butt because you go through the standard process, but when they don't reply, you have to email a specific contact on Amazon and then they help you out. And then you have to wait again and then query it again. And it's a long, arduous process. So I think the scammers kind of count on the consumers just going, you know what, it's 60 Canadian dollars, it doesn't matter, whatever. I'm just gonna leave it after the third query. <laughs> so yeah, I, I kind of think that's how the profiting works there, but at least Amazon is willing to help you out if you put in the legwork. And with that, it brings me to the end of another scam graphics card video. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe to the channel. I'll do a follow-up video if any of those two graphics cards do actually show up eventually. Um, if you want to figure out how to fix one of these scam graphics cards, I've actually done a video on that before, so I'll have it linked in the description. But if you want me to actually fix this specific new and improved scam card, let me know. If there's enough uh, response, I'm, I, I may actually end up doing that. If you liked the video, like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one, share it with your friends, and until the next video, bye-bye.